Well, welcome back. Hi, my name's Joel Duff. And yes, there's a new participant in the hemoglobin challenge, or the hemoglobin challenge, as I've been told, I should say. Uh, and it's not Brian Thomas, who's a two-time participant. We have a new one, which is Brian Osborne. Brian Osborne of Answers in Genesis. Yes, he makes the blood cell claim from dinosaur tissue that there are blood cells found in those dinosaur bones. Let's take a look at that claim. But before we do that, I just want to remind you what the hemoglobin challenge is for any of you newcomers. So really quickly, here's how it works. So here's how the challenge works. I'm asking, can anyone who has inappropriately in the past said or implied that dinosaur bones have unfossilized red blood cells or undecayed hemoglobin in them, recognize their error, and describe this soft tissue more accurately in the future using terms such as hemoglobin-derived porphyrins or chemical breakdown products of hemoglobin or evidence of former presence of hemoglobin. Uh, maybe presence of shapes of former cells, or some similar phrase capturing this sort of sentiment. All right, so who are our major players? Our major players are a variety of typically young earth creationists who, in various videos or articles, reference or allude to the fact that hemoglobin or red blood cells are found intact in ancient fossils, right? And so can they... Oh, and they do this without the qualifying technical language to explain to their audience that it's not actual hemoglobin or it's not the actual cells that are found there, but some kind of breakdown product, some kind of decayed remains, some kind of, well, really stable molecules that are the products of that decay uh, or have been stabilized in some fashion are found in some uh, fossils. All right. So, we got to we got to get to today's contestants. Let's 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 show you the evidence, right? What has this contestant said that uh, I am calling out and saying that they are inappropriately describing the scientific evidence? And it's Brian Osborne. Let's go to the tape. So what we're going to see here is a very short clip from Answers in Genesis in their Answers News program from September third, two thousand and twenty-four. Uh, here we have Patricia Angler and Brian Osborne uh, discussing some recent evidence of uh, how um, collagen fibers are preserved or, yeah, well preserved in ice age sort of age tissues. And they're remarking about how, well, if collagen can be preserved in mammoths and, well, dinosaurs aren't that much older because they're only from the flood, which is just a few hundred years before that, uh, young earth creationists wouldn't be surprised to find like intact collagen fibers uh, in dinosaur bones. But along the way, of course, Brian Osborne has to um, also reiterate the point that many other things are found in dinosaur bones. And that's what we're going to hear in this short clip. All right. So here we go. And in case someone's not really familiar with this, it's not just even the creation literature, but even a lot of secular literature is admitting we're finding all this soft tissue mm -hmm. from things that are supposedly millions of years old, like dinosaurs. We're literally finding soft tissue from dinosaurs still intact in their bones. And when we say soft, we mean it's the original tissue. It's still pliable. It's still stretchy. You can pull it, it'll spring back in place. Oftentimes, there are blood vessels and red blood cells still intact in that tissue. It's really cool. It's amazing. And those organic remnants, just like our flesh, they're made of mostly water. And they should not last really hundreds of years after the creature's death. Maybe thousands, no way millions. It's a great confirmation of the biblical time. All right, you catch that? So we've got, uh, we have blood vessels, we have red blood cells. He used that phrase, red blood cells have been found right, in these dinosaur bones. And he went on to even add on to it, this is the cherry on top, that most cells are composed of mostly water. Like, how could that have survived for millions of years? Right, so he clearly is under the impression that what has been found are like actual cells, kind of like there's been blood cells have been found from mammoths that are thousands of years old that are preserved in permafrost right? It's frozen. You open it up. They can, uh, you know, and as you break that open, you can, you can get actual blood cells that are there. I, you know, I freely admit there's actual blood cells there. 
A lot of the not a lot of the organic molecules in those blood cells are in not the best shape. Like the DNA is not completely intact always, and so forth. So it is in a semi-degraded mode, but it's still like the actual components of the cell are still there. There's there's actually a, there's some bit of the plasma membrane that's holding that thing together, right? Brian Orsborn seems to think there's actual red blood cells in those dinosaur bones. All right, let's not, I mean, this is clear as day that Brian Osborne is pitching to the audience that there's red blood cells found in dinosaur bones. I'm sure the audience sitting out in front of these folks here is just like, wow, that's amazing. Red blood cells. Now, yeah, how can red blood, I mean, after all, if you just pick your, prick your finger and put that on a slide, uh, with some water, guess what happens? The red blood cells explode and they're like, they disappear. I mean, like within seconds, they're gone. And so, you know, like if they can't survive that long, how they survive in a dinosaur for that long? Uh, that's impossible. Well, of course, that does create a problem for creationists too. They have to explain how it lasts for, you know, several thousand years. But I've already pointed out that mammoths have some red blood cells that are preserved for thousands of years in ice conditions, right? Very, very cold conditions. Um, but dinosaurs, no. Red blood cells aren't found. There is the remains of the hemoglobin, right? Hemoglobin. and But it's not the entire molecule. It's not the entire protein. It's a highly degraded molecule in which you just have the aromatic cyclical compound with the iron still left in it which is in a highly stable state, which could continue to survive in that particular bone if it hadn't been dug up for another 100 million years. But that's not the red blood cell itself. I want to remind you, cells, especially in animals, are composed of an outer surface, which is the plasma membrane, which is made up of a phospholipid, which is basically a fat. So it's a fat bubble, right? Your cells are fat bubbles. They're not particularly stable, right, by themselves, that fat layer would be very easy to extract. If those if those were red blood cells that were inside of that dinosaur bone and you opened up that dinosaur bone and you found red blood cells, you'd be able to extract a whole suite of biochemical uh, biochemicals. It would be easy to identify and be able to say like, yeah, there's, you know, a whole suite of different proteins, a whole suite of different fats, lipids, right? Nucleic acids, all these different things should be present and easily quantifiable. And yet that's not what's in the literature. There are bits of collagen left, but collagen is a very stable molecule, especially after it's been cross-linked and slightly modified um, over time. And there's some other molecule, like there is some heme molecules, right? The, the, the decayed well, they're actually porphyrins at that point. They've changed their molecular characteristics such that they're they are not like the original biomolecule. But Brian Osborne clearly thinks, and I've, I've heard him talk. I've gone and heard Brian Osborne give talks and talk about soft tissues, and he clearly thinks there's original biomolecules in their original state found in dinosaur bones. Completely untrue. Um, now, the, the folks here at Answers in Genesis are all science. These are not scientists. They're like, they have education degrees. They're they're communicators, right? All they know is the young earth creationist literature, and they believe that young earth creationist literature, and they're just saying what they've heard, not through any experience on their own. They haven't really thought about the basic biology here. They haven't thought about how how silly it is to describe these cells in the way that they're described. Yes, there are public press articles. There are things where, you know, that even scientists talk about, you know, refer to, you know, blood having been found. But they're not actually, they don't actually mean the actual cells, like the original cells are there. It's evidence that there was blood there. Evidence that there are remains like actual organic remains of some of the original biomolecules that were present in the original living thing, but not complete cells, right? Not complete cells in their regular original architecture with their original biomolecules. It's the decayed remains of some of those biomolecules are still there. That's what has been found in these things. And that doesn't fit 
the young earth creationist narrative here because what they're trying to what they're trying to say what they're trying to imply to their audience is is that yeah the world's only 6000 years old and these bones are only 40 4500 years old so not that old after well we have lots of objects that are 4000 years old including mammoths well in the young earth creationist uh, scheme of things mammoths are only 4000 years old and they have like abundant collagen and they've got actual cells right that are preserved and so they would expect to find these types of things in dinosaur bones. And so when they hear reports of things that sound like that, they describe them as the, the same kind of discoveries that are found in, say, mammoths. Um, but they're not at all alike. These are very different types of molecules that are being reported uh, in the literature. And what bothers me on the, the whole hemoglobin challenge is, like, they're... Um, they are telling their audience something that's not true. In other words, they are misleading their audience to believe that these things are equivalent when they're not actually equivalent. And that's my challenge is to, you know, I basically tell the truth about this, right? Tell, tell what the evidence actually is. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't really help the young earth creationists uh, story because in fact, it's consistent for young earth creationists to predict that dinosaurs should have like almost fresh looking collagen. They should have red blood cells preserved in them. I admit, if they were only 4,500 years old, I certainly absolutely would expect that at some point we'd find a dinosaur bone somewhere preserved in, in sediments that are only 4,500 years old from Noah's flood. And they should have incredible numbers of biomolecules that are still in close to their original state. That is what I would expect as well. But just because you expect that doesn't mean you can simply claim that that's what's been found. The evidence that supports your position has not yet been discovered. You may want to maintain your belief that it will be discovered someday, and you're hopeful because you hear all these reports of biomolecules discovered in ancient, you know, 100 million year old fossils. But those bio, but you have to still understand that those biomolecules are not in the same condition as present day molecules and therefore time has passed and you can argue about how much time has passed but for these particular molecules that have been found these are really stable highly decayed biomolecules that are in a very different altered state than their original state and they're altered just to the extent where you wouldn't expect them to have changed this much over just a few thousand years right what it appears is that they've been changing over a much longer period. So the story told by these biomolecules is very different than the story being told to this particular audience here. So that's the challenge to Brian Osborne is to at least recognize that, at least, at least modify your language such that you're not simply not, well, okay, I'll say it. You're not simply just telling a lie to your audience. Um, I think Brian Osborne should know better. I'm not sure that the other two up here would know better. They don't really, I mean, all they know is the Young Earth Creationist literature. They're not familiar with uh, original literature so much. Um, all right, that's it. Hemoglobin Challenge, episode number eight, Brian Osborne, um, complete misuse of the phrase blood cells having been found in dinosaurs. That's it. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.